Um, I want to be very careful what I say, and the reason is for obvious reasons, and that uh, because I know that um, there's been a lot on the social media, and um, maybe the way, let me start by apologizing to us if there's any embarrassment that you have felt by what has gone on on the social media. I am genuinely sorry. Um, I'm very sorry about it. Um, I've been here for 26 years and I've worked with my life. I've worked with my being and all God's given ideas, wisdom, understanding of what to do as a pastor of a church. And uh, this church is family to me. Because this is the family I've had. This, they are the people who have believed in me. And many people who are here have been here for 20-something years. When I did not even know what I was doing. But one way or the other, I was just following God. And I don't need to tell you I'm from Okumo. <laughs> um, and of course, I'm born into the royal family. And, but one way or the other, the Lord took me in a completely different direction made me a pastor and um, last year in December I was on vacation in Nigeria and while I was on vacation like I do, normally do every December August and December I'm in Nigeria most of the time or go to other parts of the world in, uh, in August uh, I was in Nigeria when the king of our town died and um, I will not be able to say so much because uh, I'm sure there are people who are sitting here, and there are people, many online, that uh, I don't want to say anything that will jeopardize a process. But I will say enough for you to understand, because I hold you as a pastor that you are not confused. Amen? So while I was in Nigeria in December, the king of our town died. And uh, I'm a little bit close to the family, because, like I said, I'm from the royal family. And of course, after the way we have five royal families in Obomosho, and after the Oyeumis, the Ajagbladi, we know that it's my family, Olaoye, that is next. Everybody from Obomosho who knows about the traditions knows that. And of course, I, of course, knew about that. But I was not interested in it at all, because I believe that I've gone on a completely different path. And also because my father never sat me down and said that, Gandhi, if you want to become the Shawn of Obumasho, you can be. He never told me, so I never bothered. All I knew was that my dad tried to be the Shawn of Obumasho in 1940, but it was not what God wanted for him. The people rejected him. So I was not interested, so I continued with my life. And, but in that December, people started to call me and say, Gandhi, why didn't you go and do this? I mean especially the people who are close to me, who knew that it was my family that was the next. But I told them that, what do you mean by that? So go to Bumashua. Why would I do such a thing? I'm not interested. I believe I have a different path. And of course, those of us who are members of this church, you know, I said sometime last year that I was going to retire. How many people remember I said that? I've always said that to anybody who cares to that at 60, I was going to retire. People always ask me, what are you going to retire into? All I know is that I've done 30 years as a pastor, and I felt that I'm not leaving ministry because there are other expressions of ministry. And so I planned that I was still going to do other things in the ministry, and that's when I put Pastor Chinere as the executive pastor, and then we put Pastor Lumide as the lead pastor. And I explained to us then that Pastor Lumide is what is the pastor basically in charge, and the way Wale is to ignite, that's how Pastor Lumide is to Jesus. Has. How many people remember I said that? Of course. And so, but when I was doing all of that, not that I had any plan of what I was going to do. All I knew was that at 30 years of pastoring, and Pastor Lumide has been my assistant for 20, 21 years. That's a long time to be somebody's assistant. You understand? I'm thinking that someday you will be there. 21 years. That's nearly a generation. Since a generation is about 25 years. And so, I didn't know. So when they were telling me, I told them that the life I wanted to live after 60 was very simple. I wanted a very simple life. I wanted to travel the world. 
I wanted to see the world because I like traveling. And, you know, I tell people I was born in a car. So maybe that's why, you know, <laughs> I'm just restless as a person. That is my nature. And it's a little bit difficult to change that. And I'm just restless. I just want things to happen. I just want, I just want to be on the move. I don't know why. But I know that that's the way God created me. And so that was my plan for 60. But then the people started calling me a lot and say, Gandhi, do this. But I wasn't interested. So, of course, the next natural thing I'm supposed to do, I'm a pastor in Redeemed Christian Church of God. So I didn't want Daddy Gio, who, of course, is my spiritual father. I didn't want him to hear. So I called him. I said, Daddy, um, <laughs> uh, this is what is going on, and I don't want you to hear. So I said to him that uh, they want me to come and become Sean Wong from Marshall. <laughs> but, uh, but I just don't want you to hear. And so while I was talking, he said to me, he said, no, 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 no. I said, but I'm not, it's not because I'm interested. But <laughs> I didn't want him to hear. That's why I'm saying this. So he stopped me. He said, no, don't say you are not interested. I said, why? He said, no, this kind of thing, you brought it from heaven. I said, what do you mean, sir? He said, of course. You are born into a royal family, you brought it from heaven. So don't ever say you are not interested. So he told me that go and pray and go and fast about it. I didn't pray, I didn't fast. Because it wasn't what I was interested in. So I asked him, the next thing I asked him, I said, Sir, do you know of any pastor who left pastoring and went to become a noble? He said, of course. He said, I, he said, he can tell me four. He spoke, it, he, he called two, and then he said, he said I said that if he's you can go ahead. That's all I am going to say. You didn't mention four, but you mentioned two. He said he was trying to remember the rest, but he just felt that that doesn't matter. Just go ahead and do pray and fast about it. And he told me that um, he never wanted to become the general overseer. But that I can see what the general overseer is today. So he said, run ahead and do whatever you have to do. But of course, like I said, I didn't pray and fast about it. So. Because it wasn't what I was interested in. But, to cut a very long story short, January 2nd, that was the first Sunday of the year, I had told people who were calling me, I had told them that that day is the day I'm going to tell all of them I am not doing. So, because the people were calling me about this. I remember I was on the phone with Pastor Agu till about 1 a.m., that is, on the first stroke, the second. So I told her, I'm going to, uh, 2 o'clock, I said, I'm going to go and sleep. I have service. It's the first Sunday of the year. I'm going to uh, tell these people they should stop bothering me about it. And I woke up at 6.30 in the morning to pee. One of the problems of old age. And um, <laughs> you can't sleep so long again, you know, because I was still talking at 2 a.m. At 6.30, I had to wake up. So I went to pee. I said, I finished peeing. I lied on the bed. That was the first Sunday of this year. Just thinking about what the service was going to be. Then I said, Lord, I'm at the crossroad of life. These people who are saying this thing to me, that I should come and... Um, <laughs> so this day I said, I'm going to give them the final answer. I am not doing. And that's the truth. Because I was thinking to leave Jesus' house, leave Washington, and go and live in Ogmosho. That's not the deal. That's not. I hope you believe what I'm saying. The next thing I had, clearly, you are born for this. This is the reason for your birth. That's what I had. And, of course, that's not what I was expecting. But let me tell you this. When I hear, I am 10 over 10. So, what did I do? Of course, a little bit confused. So, I got ready. I came here. I called Pastor Libide, I called Pastor Chiri, and I called Pastor Tuli. The three of them, I called them. You know, a lot of things go, goes on before service, you don't even know. Now you are knowing. <laughs> so I called the three of them to my office on January 2nd, and I said to them, guys, after that, Olubide was aware of this, you know, I was telling him that this was going on and all of those things. So, and I told him, I'm not interested, I'm just, just personal just between the two of us. So I called the three of them and I said to them, 
this is what the Lord told me. And I said, I am 10 over 10 and never miss it. There is time when I don't know. I will just say, let's go ahead and do it. But when I say, God told me, never in 30 years of ministry. People who are close to me know exactly what I'm saying. So I said, but that's not what I want. But when the Lord spoke to me, the next thing I said was very simple. If it is not you, I am not. Stop it. Make sure that the process does not go. I'm going to cut a lot of things, which I will, at a later date, give the details for you. But the next thing I did is I got into the process. Because I'm only following God. That's all. I am only following God. There is nothing in this world that anybody has to offer me than what I have committed half of my adult life to do. Absolutely nothing. And if you, are, if you know me very well, I am not doing this because I have nothing else to do. I'm telling you today. I am not doing this because I have nothing else to do. I am doing this because I believe in it.